Was it a mean, hairy monster? to that uh, garden savannah. Um, in the basement, I think. No, I looked there. You did? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, uh, I'll find it for you Saturday. Mom, you promised me to go to the beach. We will. We will. I'll find it Saturday. If I don't find it Saturday, I'll find it Sunday. Promise. And probably the gremlins took it away. Like Panda. We never found him here. You didn't like Panda. Well, Grandma gives me baby toys. That's because... She doesn't want to see you grow up. Just like your father. Heartless woman. Listen, we gotta run. If they call, tell them that I'm on my way, okay? We've got that meeting with Mrs. Belsey at four. <sighs> Myra called a staff meeting. I'll change it to tomorrow. Okay. I will make great juice. <laughs> Look, I'll make a deal. You drink the apple juice, I'll buy you with your food at the beach on Saturday, okay? I like clowns with mayonnaise. <laughs> you oh. got it. I gotta run. Yeah. When you gotta run? You gotta run. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Yeah. Bye, Dad. Bye. 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 Christine needs you. It's Danny. Give me five minutes. Okay. I've got a failure to thrive baby checking in tomorrow at four. I'd ask if you're kidding, but I know you have no sense of humor. This is right up your alley. Myra, I can't do it. Matt and I have a meeting at Alex's school. There's no way. I'm sorry. Okay. 
I can put them off till Friday. Hell, Myra, I have twice the caseload I can handle. Amelia, I got you this job because you're the best diagnostician I ever taught. Now, she's being transferred from Dr. Sullivan. He's done almost every test in the book and come up empty. Normal weight at birth. Breastfed, stopped growing at nine months. He referred them to us after the father started screaming negligence. It's everyone's nightmare. A failure to thrive baby, two lawyer parents, and they have friends on the board. Well, chances are it's behavioral, not physical. Yeah, but they're convinced it's some other disease we incompetent doctors have overlooked. Good luck. Hey, kitten. What are you doing here? Where's your mommy, huh? Come here. Come on. Let's find your mommy. Look, the boy has had enough. You had your chance. My sheet says to collect a sample. Well, you're going to have to wait. Here she is. What's the problem? It's Danny. Look, they all cry. You poked him three times and you still couldn't find a vein? So? He's a hard stick. His veins are mush. I'll do it. Fine. But if you want the results by tomorrow, I got ten minutes to get it downstairs. Vampire. I don't want on my boy again. There's got to be a better way. But believe me, I know how hard it is. How could you? You haven't been through this before. I have. I'm sorry. But you're the only one he likes. Just like if you ever had your picture taken. So it's right. Hey, sweetie. How's my favorite boy, huh? Huh? I want to shoot her with my gun. Well, you don't have a gun. Take her with my Lincoln Logs. You don't have no Lincoln Logs, honey. Would you buy me some? Mm -hmm. Now, Denny, we're going to have to take some blood for the test, OK? I don't want you and nobody else. All right, only me. From now on, I promise. Now, try to relax, OK? I'll be fast. You're so brave. It's all right, honey. Just a little bit longer. You won't even try to stand up now. Says it hurts. Doesn't want to eat. I think he knows. He knows what? That he's dying. I think he understands what it means now. Well, don't let him give up, Roberta. And don't you. He has been out of the room for a month. Can I take him to the roof garden? No, I'm afraid not. Come on, Mary Pat. Why do I have to fight you on every issue? Listen, I don't make the rules the doctors do. It makes no sense, and you know it. He's not going to catch anything and be any worse off than he is already. And besides, it'll lift his spirits. I'm sorry. I'd like to, but I can't. Then I will. How about I you pulled it off? But you did. Oh, baby, feel that sun. Hey, Danny, come here. Here. Now you look real debonair for your alley, right? Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome very much. It's nice out here, isn't it? I want to thank you, too. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Listen, why don't you take them over there in the corner? Okay. Okay. I'm going to come right over here. Look at these pretty clouds. Okay? Isn't it pretty? Look at that. Now, what is it? Well, let's take this mask off. <laughs> Look at that pretty cloud. Looks just like an angel, don't it? Mommy's like the angels. She is. That's right. Yeah. With the angels. Go 
Cyrus, how you doing? Hey, Brandon. Nice shirt. What is that? You scratch and smell. She says it's nothing serious. Just wants to talk to us as a family. Will they throw me out? Listen, Bob. We spend a small fortune so you can enjoy the benefits of a private preschool. So shape up. Brandon called me a stupid butt first. Oh, really? Is that when you put glue in his shoe? By the time he gets to elementary, we're gonna have to have letters of reference. Well, we can ask your parents. They seem to think the kid shows promise. Meeting's tomorrow at four. It's important we be on time, right? Amelia? Tomorrow at four, that's not a problem, is it? No, there's no problem. Hey, hey, Danny's test results. His white cell count is way up. I don't think we should wait. The damn antibiotic is harder on him than the infection. Yeah, but it works. We've got to do it. It's, it's, he's losing too much weight. Uh-oh. Don't look now. Oh, no. Dandy Randy. I need this like a hemorrhoid. Hiya, dolls. How come you're so happy? Someone critical. Ah, emergency room. Jeez, what a rush. Two stabbings, a suicide. Mm. You're a ghoul, Randy. You know, I bet when you were a kid, you used to pick the wings off of insects. No. But I do now. Does that count? <laughs> Should we wait for the other test? I think the infection's treatable now. I say we give him the amphotericin. Whoa. Amphotericin? Bad stuff. Kid with AIDS, right? That's right. Sins of the fathers. The sins of the fathers had nothing to do with it. He had a transfusion. Oh, what a shame. Well, see you in the trenches. Why did you lie? His father's a junkie. His mother died from AIDS. I can't stand his smug superiority. With his lifestyle, he's lucky it's not him. It's not a punishment, Amelia. And it's not Danny's fault. So you don't have to defend him. You're right. I'm sorry. You're taking this case a, a little personally, don't you think? Order the info from the pharmacy. somewhere. I have a meeting. All right, well, maybe a short one, okay? Just a dream? Just a dream. Do you have that here? Here it is. Okay, let's see. As usual, Walter stopped at the bakery on his way home from school. Alex has apologized, and he understands that such behavior is not acceptable. Mm, that's good. Ah, Dr. Stewart. Sorry, I'm late. We're almost done. We did wait. Hi, Mom. So, we had a little talk with Alex, and he's going to share, which has become a problem of late. Aren't you, Alex? Right. Good. And he won't pull any more pranks. 
and watch his language, which is deteriorating. Good. Well, I hope that's an end of it. Bye. Oh, I'll see you tomorrow. I didn't say butthead, so do I get the gummy bears you promised? I don't know. Come on. See ya. Bye. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye. You promised you'd be on time. Well, Denny has an infection. I had to supervise him with treatment. I wanted to go to the bank. Hey. How about dinner? How about Italian? Antonio's? My treat. Mr. Tang's. If Mark and I figure about another six weeks, we can put it on the market. It's a perfect house for a yuppie family, if there are any left. Yeah, or a showroom. Marco can use it to impress your female clients. So what if he does? He's single. Most of his girlfriends aren't. Oh, I love when you talk about Marco's sex life. You get this juicy, jealous look I just love. <laughs> I'm not jealous. Mm -hmm. I just don't want you picking up his bad habits. Mm -hmm. I want you to see it. Sure, when? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow afternoon? Do I like this? No. Yes. <laughs> Tomorrow's bad. I've got that failure to thrive I was telling you about. Parents are wealthy, they're both lawyers. Okay, fine. Come to the basketball game on the way back from Dodie's on Saturday, and we'll all go from there. You've only been to one game all year. Half the wives think I'm single. Yeah, you think they're watching the game? They're just discussing which one of you has the best butt. You said butt, did I? Oops. I really want you to see it. It's a great house. All right. Tremor started five minutes after treatment. Um, he's developing a rash, and I think he's gone toxic, reacting to the antibiotic. All right, we'll discontinue the info. Give him rectal acetaminophen and a hit of IV antihistamine. Doctor, listen, didn't you recognize me this morning? I don't want him to get that again. Look, I know it's horrible, but it worked last time. He beat the infection. You can't save him. Not in the long run. I'm a doctor, Roberta. I've got to treat what I can, and this infection was treatable. Sure. I understand. He looks a whole lot better now. I know, I'm sorry. This won't take long. I reviewed her history, and I'd like to line up some tests. It's about time. I have a list of possibilities Dr. Sullivan never looked for. He told us to keep a food diary. She's three, her brother's five, and he's fine. I don't see how it can be anything we're doing wrong. Oh, no one's blaming you, Mr. Blake. And it's important you don't blame yourselves. We've tried everything. They say feed her exactly at six. We try. But sometimes things can't happen right on the dot. Well... If it's all right with you, I'd like to bring in a behavior therapist. Why do we need a behavior therapist? I'd like to try some other people feeding her. We could use a break. Good. All right, you. Come on, I'm going to really check you out now. It's heaven here. Yeah, my life's not bad. You could say, I've become the man I wanted to marry. <laughs> well, that's good. You ought to write an article about that. It's been done. Hmm. All the editors, they're obsessed with the idea that in the 90s, women who tried to have it all must pay the piper. Well, I wish someone told me how hard it was going to be. Nobody knew. 
What? You know that little boy I was telling you about who has AIDS? Denny? Yeah. Yeah, he's disappearing right in front of me. I can't stand it. I thought doctors aren't supposed to get attached to their patients. We're not. It's just, uh... I don't know what it is with him. I, I don't know how to explain it. A couple of months ago, he was such a little devil. He reminded me a lot of Alex. You try to do too much. No, I have too much to do. There's a difference. Pressure crashed. I thought he was going to code on me. What did Myra say? I left the files with her. She said he should be DNR. No way! What, you want this kid on a ventilator? <laughs> We're Intubated? not talking DNR yet. We put this kid on a ventilator. We're committing child abuse. This is my patient. We're not quitting. He's not going to get better. He's going to die. And I don't want you to try to keep him alive. There are still treatments we haven't explored, Roberta. I've explored them all with my daughter. I don't want to put my grandson through it. It's not worth it. Well, I'm not ready to give up yet. This isn't about you, Dr. Stewart. Roberta this afternoon, and she doesn't want us to resuscitate if it gets to that. I can't support this decision. Her daughter died of AIDS, didn't she? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I say we don't have the right. Come on, ladies. If it's pneumonia, he won't recover. Think what he'll go through. You know what intensive care is like. But what if he stops breathing? I'm supposed to just watch? Don't give him oxygen, don't code him. I don't know how we can make him DNR unless we can prove he's gonna die right away. Right. He's not going to die right away. And if he goes on a ventilator, he's not coming off. Oh, come on. There's more we can do. You know that. Amelia, we can't save him. Let's not make him suffer any more than he has to. <sighs> DNR order is effective as of now. I'm sorry about the game. I don't give a damn about the game. Today was supposed to be Alex's day. Little guys waited months. I know. I'll make it up to both of you. When, Amelia? Look, Matt, you went to med school. You know what it's like. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I gave it up. 
I don't mind taking the back seat, but I don't want you doing that to Alex. Well, that's unfair, Matt. Oh, come on. The guy knows more about diseases than he does dinosaurs. So? So when you got this job, you said things would change, right? Not just more money. You said more time. There will be more time. It's just gonna take a little while. We used to talk about having another child. Used to. We almost lost Denny today. Uh, I'm glad I'm not a doctor. Increase his dosage and talk to Amelia about this test. There she is. Hey, do you have time to review the kid with a Kawasaki syndrome? Talk to Randy. I'm out of here. What's the occasion? I got a date. Lucky you. Marco. Hey, Amelia. What's wrong? Nothing. Well, Matt didn't tell me you're coming down. Oh, he doesn't know. This is Matt's wife. She's a doctor. Oh, wait. Director of Clinical Pediatrics Mountain View. And still a major babe. I'm Amelia. Hi. Ursula, nice to meet you. So, what do you think? Oh, it's incredible. Well, you should have seen it three months ago. There's a dying old lady in it. She got a major facelift. Really. Well, come on, I'll show you around. Oh, no, no. Uh, I want to surprise him. Oh, well, we can take a hint. Oh, hey. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. You know, Marco, I can't even think of anything you wouldn't do. Ah, good one, Amelia. Job, huh? Just hanging with kids all day? I hang with kids all day. You know what I mean. You mean happy, healthy kids. Hey, Alex! Hi. Hey! How you doing? Lucky turkey! Oh, they are all so excited about Thanksgiving. You going back to Minneapolis? Not this year. My uh, folks went to Florida. So what are you doing? I have a hot date with a frozen turkey dinner. <laughs> Well, why don't you come to our house? Yeah, Patty. Please come. Uh, no. No, I couldn't. 
Yeah, sure you could. Alex would love it. Sure. We'd love to have you. Thanks. I'll make a pie. Great. Yeah, sure. Why not? It'd be great. <laughs> most amazing dish on earth. We weren't married yet. I was kissing ass. It's just a tub of goulash. No, it's her little way of saying, look, I'm a doctor, and I still manage to cook my son his favorite meals. And my family was never inconvenienced by my career. Well, that's a crock. She was never there. Making goulash is the only way she knows how to show love. Great. We'll fall out when we get really desperate. Come on, it's Thanksgiving. You should be grateful for your overbearing mother-in-law's greasy goulash. Damn. Have you seen the color? So how come you never told me Alex's teacher is such a babe? She's not a babe, Marco. She's an intelligent, sensitive, and classy woman. So? I can adjust. <laughs> Forget it. She's not your type. Really? Whose type is she? Here it comes. Ah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. This is a lovely match. Remember Marcus Sykes lived in that big house on Spring Road? Yeah. Colon cancer. Well, uh, um, Dad, uh, please. I opened him up, and before you knew it... Dad, uh, you know I don't like talking about this kind of stuff at the dinner table. Occupational hazard in the family of doctors. <laughs> I understand you're both doctors? I'm a psychiatrist, and Harry's a gastroenterologist. Yeah, for those who know they're neurotic, and those who don't. <laughs> 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 Matt was going to become an orthopedic surgeon. Really? You're going to be a doctor, too? We were so surprised when he quit to become a... Ma, I didn't quit. I left because I hated it. He was always at the top of his class, too. Ma, I was never the top of my class. Why do you always tell people that? Grandma, I made a picture for you. Did you, dear? How lovely. I can hardly wait to see it. No, no, not now. Mom, it's okay. Sit. Alex loves to paint. Daryl, taste the pumpkin. It's off. What kind of spices did you use, dear? Ashley, I made the pumpkin, Ma. It's curry. Um, give me this stuff. Stuffing too? Um, it's packaged. Breadcrumbs. I taste something else. It's the giblets. You like those. I didn't use giblets. Hmm, that's quite tasty for packaged. Oh, how nice! Tell me who this man is. That's not a man, it's a little kid with a machine gun. <laughs> Is he going to shoot somebody? He already shooted somebody. See, those are all the dead bodies. All, all, the, all the boys are into guns and violence at this age. Yeah. <coughs> I'll just get your father a little milk. Alex should have some, too. I'll get it. I insist. Hello. Myra, come on. I have Matt's parents here. All right. Surely someone else can deal with it. It's Thanksgiving. No. Somebody else can't. Don't worry. I can take over here. 
I'll be back as soon as I can. Why is everybody so grouchy? Mrs. Wilson, you can't take that boy out of here without a doctor's release. He wants to go home. And so help me God, he's going. Now, if you don't want to take the IV out, I'll do it myself. Not without authorization. I can handle this, Mary Pat. Thanks. Roberta, come on, we need to talk. Paging nurse Thompson, line four. What's going on? Denny's father called. Says he wants to come and see Denny. I don't trust him. Well, taking him home isn't the answer. I've got to get him out of here. And me too. Every time I walk in this building, I think about my little girl dying. I want to be different for Denny. Let me take him home. For one more Christmas. He'll have his toys. I'll buy him a tree. I'll feed him the things he likes. When time comes, I can lay down with him. And play some sweet gospel music. That's not such a bad way for a little boy to die, is it? Roberta, you know it's not going to be like that. He needs medical attention. You can't handle it yourself. Are you with me or not? Get the release papers ready for Roberta. You should have a look at this. Call this into the pharmacy, will ya? I'm out of here. The bird awaits. Hey, you've had Sarah Blake on liquids for two days? Yeah, I need her stomach empty for a malabsorption test. She's starving to death. Well, I discussed it with Frank Blake. Well, next time, discuss it with me. I want her back on food. Now. <laughs> What's with her, PMS? Danny's checking out. I think it was her own kid. Have you ever considered becoming an artificial heart donor? Hey. Hey, Dylan. I hate this place. Oh, I know. Oh, well, I got a present for you. Here it is. What's this? Guess not, huh? You want to see impersonation? I do good bulldog. Mr. Jocelyn, please report to the Watch veterinarian. <laughs> Can't really have trouble breathing, so. Yeah. Well, take care of your grandma, okay? Summoned again. Emilio? Summons. Parental forum to determine policy on junk food and the lunches. Is this necessary? All right, I admit it. I've been putting jelly donuts in Alex's lunch. Jelly donuts? Are you serious? Well, I knew the Gestapo would catch up eventually, but hell, I used to eat them every day when I was growing up. We have to skip this meeting. Go into hiding. No, Amelia. We have to fight for what's right. For our way of life, for what we believe in. We can't just run. Power of the people. Amelia. Things are going really well. Her caloric intake is up and she's gaining. Good. There's just one more test I'd like. I read an article on dwarfism. If it's all right with you, Mrs. Blake, I'd like to do an HIV on you. I did have a blood transfusion. I knew it. All of Dr. Sullivan's mumbo jumbo about behavior is crap. My little girl is sick because some idiot doctor gave her tainted blood. I Mr. Blake, please. I don't think it's AIDS. Nor do any of the other doctors. 
We just want to do the test to rule out the possibility. That's all. That's all. Okay? Hey, huh? Now look what we got here. Oh, carrots. Wow. Oh, they don't do as well on your front as your back, you know. Here, it's better in your mouth. Ready? Got you. You gotta get big and strong. You know, you want the president one day, huh? Here, come on. Go. So, uh, how did they take it? I think they're almost hoping it is AIDS. That way they don't have to feel responsible. You ever notice how they don't talk to her or touch her? Well, let's avoid placing blame until we have more information. Yeah, well, she's gained almost a pound since we've been feeding her. <laughs> oh, yeah, open your mouth. That's good. Oh. It's ironic. Sarah's dying from lack of love. Denny's dying despite it. Both cases, medicine's useless. Well, you're not God, Amelia. You're just a doctor. Thanks, Myra. Brandon told me he tried to trade his whole lunch for Alexander's jelly donut. And I assume that Alexander wouldn't. Lentil loaf on rice cakes for a jelly donut? Not a shot. I've always kept a jar of sweets available to Max, and it's his decision to take one or not. It teaches self-discipline. If I tried that with Brandon, he'd empty the jar in two minutes. This is ludicrous. Of course, I only use healthy sweets. Oh, please. Healthy sweets? I would never fill my jar with any sweets because, frankly, that's not the message I want to send. Well, the message I want to send is to tell your precious Brandon not to eat his damn boogers. <gasps> <laughs> I'll warn Alex not to trade, and I'm sure your kids will be safe. Excuse me. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. I mean, someone had to put the nutritional fascists in their place. <laughs> Does this mean Alex can come back to school? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Um, I'll see you Saturday night. Okay, bye. Saturday night? Well, Patty's gonna bring Alex to the basketball game, then take him home when the boys and I have a Christmas party. Well, I can't keep depending on the other wives. It's not fair. No, of course not. Well, if you'd rather come yourself, that's fine. I mean, I'd prefer it. I can't. You know I have ER duty. Yeah, right. Thanks for meeting me, Dodes. Anytime, any place, meals. So what's wrong? What do you mean? Talk to me. I think that, um, Matt's gotten tired of me. No wonder. I mean, he's looking better and better, and I look like I feel. Women flirt with him all the time. He has a crush on Alex's teacher. She's cheerful, beautiful, nurturing. And yeah, I have a crush on her, too. So what are you going to do about it? I don't know. Look, you have to take better care of yourself. You're not going to be good to anyone if you crack up. You sound like Matt. Well, he's right. He hates what I do. He hates to hear me talk about kids like Alex that are dying of AIDS. He hates my hours of... Oh, you just said kids like Alex dying of AIDS. No, I didn't. I said Denny. Denny. Let's have a drink, okay? Yeah, good idea.
Dr. Stewart. The therapist was by earlier. Didn't mention you was coming. Oh, she didn't know. I just wanted to bring Denny this. My son Alex loves it. You didn't have to drive all the way down here. Well. No. Come in, please. Thank you. So how is he? Well, getting better. Getting stronger. Sit down. Today he tried to hit the therapist. <laughs> No new problem? Just the eczema scratching itself raw. Eczema seems to be more common in kids with AIDS. I'll send over some skin cream. Thank you. Your daughter? Mm-hmm. What about his father? <sighs> I haven't heard from him, thank goodness. He's so excited watching me trim the tree. Beautiful. Warm out, but he's definitely happier here. It's a beautiful tree. You were right, Dr. Stewart. Of course. Well, let me make you some tea. And a sword? No. Now, how are you going to use a sword if you're busy carrying all those other weapons? Easy. I'm a superhero. Are you going to be at the emergency room all night? Mm-hmm. But Patty's going to take you to Daddy's basketball game, and I'll be here when you wake up in the morning. Is there babies in the hospital who don't get better? Yeah, but most do. Do some die ever? Sometimes. Am I going to die? Oh, sweetie. Not for a long, long time. But you know, sooner or later, everybody dies. That's enough, damn it. Hey. Your daddy doesn't like it when I talk about people being sick sometimes. That's okay. Don't worry. to you that dying babies might be a little morbid for a five-year-old. Well, he was asking that. What am I supposed to do, lie? We lie all the time, Amelia. About the tooth fairy, about the Easter bunny, about Santa. He should know the truth, too. Why are you so angry at me lately? There's no balance anymore. You know, you're hardly ever at home, and when you are, all you do is talk about your work. You talk about work. I don't resent it. When was the last time you asked me about my work, huh? I told you two weeks ago I had a meeting about the financing on the next two houses, and you never even asked how it went. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. It's not enough anymore. There you go. You'll live. But you're gonna want these. Take two of them every four hours till they're gone. Why don't you take the train down the old x -ray? I've got two med students for you. Why is it always me? You're the best I've got. That's a good answer. Hmm. Is this the first ER duty? Mm-hmm. God help me. Mr. Lopez? Mr. Lopez? Meet doctors Greenberg and Gifford. Pray for a quiet night. Going home. Let me guess, uh, pediatrics? And orthopedics. Sports medicine, how'd you know? Supersonics. I don't get it. Lucky guess. Come on. This is Williams. Hi, sweetie. What's your name? Slight increased congestion, no fever, no vomiting. Dry cough. So you're saying she has a cold? Uh -huh. Mrs. Jindal, can I see her, please? Come here, sweetie. Oh, it's okay. Was she born premature? Uh-huh. Was she on a ventilator? 
Did she have heart surgery? All right, thanks. We'll be back. Thanks. Nurse, would you like to do miss a few things? Dr. Oh. Stewart, line one. Relax. It could be a cold. Get her chest x-ray. Okay. In the emergency room, someone's going to fall down the net. Dr. Stewart. It's me. I think Alex is sick. Well, does he have a temperature? I can't find the damn thermometer. Look in the kitchen, last door to the right. Yeah, yeah. Well, can you come home? You know We've I got can't. an infinite triage at Sirius, room 16. Matt, there's an emergency. I'll call you as soon as I can. Okay. What do we got? A two-year-old fell from the second-story window, landed on the sidewalk. No apparent distress, but you will let me check her vitals. I'll kill you if you hurt my baby. I'm the doctor. I'm Dr. Stewart. What's your name? Wanda. Wanda. Okay, Wanda, did she land on her head? I don't know. I didn't see anything. Do you get security, please? <laughs> Wanda, I'm a mother, too. I just want to help. <laughs> what are you doing? Look, what's her name? Tiffany. Tiffany. It's going to be OK, all right? <laughs> this is a little dollar. I just want to help. You're hurting her. Stop. It's OK. Somebody please get security. <laughs> Look, stop it. Stop. I got it. Stop it. Right. Sing to her. Look. Keep her calm. Hello? He's got a fever. It's 102. Uh, we'll try a cool sponge bath. He's impossible. Look, you can do it. I know you can handle it. Well, of course I can handle it. That's not the point. It's you he wants. Well, let me talk to him. No, that, that could just make things worse. Can't somebody cover for you there? I wish. All hell's broken loose here tonight. Dr. Stewart, there's been a fire. We've got burn victims. Yeah, I heard. Goodbye. Coming through. Coming through there. Coming through there. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Why is Christmas always the worst? Roberta Wilson's here with Denny. Oh, no. Hi, Denny. Hi. Listen, you hold on, okay? We're gonna give you something to take away the pain and help you breathe easier. Right? Just hold on. That's right. Oh, you're a brave boy, Denny. Yes, you are. Stuart, I, I can't do this. I can't think. Listen, um, we've taken him up to pediatrics. Couldn't stand seeing him in so much pain. Oh, I know. You've been incredible. I don't need you to tell me that. I need you to cut through all this paperwork. He could die tonight. And if this is his last night on Earth, then I've wasted enough time answering these meaningless questions when I might have been holding him. Why don't you go on up ahead? I'll take care of it. <laughs> Good night, little house. And good night, Mouse. Good night, Cole. <laughs> and good night, Brush. Good night, nobody. <laughs> good night, Mouse. <laughs> good night. 
night to the old woman whispering hush. Good night, stars. Good night, air. Good night, noises everywhere. Good night, Roberta. Good night, Amelia. I didn't know you were here. I brought Alex home from the game. He seemed warm to me. By the time Matt got here, he was hot. So I thought I'd stay till you got home. I, I hope that was OK. Of course it is. Thank you. Are you OK? I'm thirsty. It's Thursday. It's how we got here. Hey, how about this? I don't know. Come on, Alex. Cut it out. Finally, he's all yours. Come on. I, uh, I'll be going. Um, feel better, Alex. Patty, wait. Do this all the time, you know. How little? Mm. You were still in diapers. Was I the same boy? Oh yeah. You were always Alexander, and I always loved you best of all. That's because I'm the boy you had. You have to love me best. He was really sick, Amelia. It's just the chicken pox, Matt. Just. What do you have to do? Be dying to get your attention? I couldn't leave. I had a baby who'd fallen three stories onto concrete. Burn victims and... When do we count, Amelia? When everyone else gets better and all the hospitals are empty? Huh? Is that when? Well, tell me! I'll take a few days off. Yeah, sure. Don't scratch, honey. It itches all over. Oh, I know. Should we read a book? No. We promised we'd get a tree. Well, we will. And I made you and Dad a Christmas present, and I forgot it at school. Did you really? That is the sweetest thing. You know what it makes me want to do? Makes me wanna do the chicken tea and cover you with strawberry jam and eat chocolate covered worms. And... So you made cookies, huh? Yes, I did. And I made some chicken kia. Uh huh. And wild rice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we eat the cookies first, huh? You call that the hoochie coochie? Alex, this is oh, the hoochie coochie. Oh, look at that hoochie coochie. Woo! Go give me that. No, we're going to have to grab it. Both hands. That's a good one. I can do that in the morning. No, it's okay. I don't mind. I miss you again, though. I miss us. If 
I at least left in two days. You sure you're not too tired? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what? I need to get some sleep. I'll be in as soon as I can. So the guy says he's Danny's father. Confronts Roberta, starts demanding details on Danny. The nurse calls me. I call Myra, who calls her attorney, who says the grandmother doesn't have the right to pull the plug. That was his advice? He had no choice. Father doesn't want to let Danny go. A child can't be DNR against the parents' wishes. We have to put the tube in. Where's his father? He's not what you think, Amelia. He's been through detox, and he's found Jesus in the bargain. He asked about you all the time, Lenny. I cannot change what has passed, Roberta. But I've prayed for God's forgiveness, and I've prayed for yours. Kenny's in pain, Lenny. He's gone. Dr. Stewart, you're Danny's father? I understand you want to give up. Why is that? I never wanted to give up. I just don't want to see him suffer. You've lost faith. Have you never seen a miracle, Dr. Stewart? There won't be any miracles for Danny. Just more agony. While you try to make up for lost time. I was in prison. I was ashamed for my son to know me. Surely there are other things to try, Doctor. Since you haven't been here, I don't see how you can be the one to evaluate that. I need some time. I want to pray for my boy now. I'm so sorry. You just say the word and I can get a judge up here. You can fight this. No. No. No matter what I think of him, he's still Danny's father. Besides me, he's the only flesh and blood Danny has. And if he needs time, well, he's family. Dr. Stewart. There's something really wrong with him. I'll be home in an hour. Are you listening to me? He's not talking. He can't hear me. I mean, he, I think he's convulsing. Uh, br bring him to emergency. No, just like that, huh? Just load the him in the car. not going to hurt him, Matt. I'll meet you. Oh, I hate you for leaving me with this. I don't know what it is. Just let me buy Matt. Take his pressure. What the hell's going on? We're gonna find out. Now, let's just have a look here. Ooh, lousy looking infection. Has he gone septic? His blood pressure's awfully low. Yeah, uh, let's get an IV in. Can't you do this? You know I can't. I'm his mother. Hey, uh, look, there's nothing more for you to do here, Matt. I'm gonna take care of him. Go a minute. All right, let's push some bug juice into this boy. Thanks, Randy. He's stabilized. We're moving 
into a private room right now. You're here, Lily. Oh, well, Bob, my son is sick. They just admitted him. Private room, no doubt. Well, he's contagious. You guys get pretty special treatment. <sighs> Look, I know it must be difficult sharing a room. Difficult? You try spending all night with another kid, crying and puking, and the parents watching TV. Well, if it was up to me, everybody would have a private room. Would you excuse us? I, mean, I, I can't hear myself thinking there. And yesterday, when I had to make a very important business call, that nightmare of a nurse told me that patients and their families cannot use her phone. Well, they like to keep the lines open. What am I supposed to do, I asked her. Keep my baby awake talking on the phone, but she doesn't care. Nobody cares about me, about my baby. You are just a bunch of quacks. You don't even know what's wrong with her, do you? Do you? Her problem isn't medical, Mr. Blake. When she's at the hospital, she gains weight. When she goes home, she loses it. What do you think that's about? Are you saying we starve her? Is that what you're saying? <sighs> she's starved. For love. You bitch! Look, I'm gonna go join my family. You cause another scene, I'm going to have you thrown out of this hospital. Come on, Jerry. She's not getting on with this. His little girl's the failure to thrive I was telling you about. I don't want to hear about it. This is our child, Amelia. Alex, remember? I was afraid for his life. Don't you think I was, too? Sometimes I feel like I'm piling up credit with God. That he's gonna make everything okay for Alex because I take care of these kids. Like they were my own. It doesn't work that way, Amelia. God doesn't make deals. Have a Merry Christmas. You too. You get well, Alex. We're getting our tree today. Who's a lucky boy? Bye, Alex. We need to talk now. No. We're checking Alex out, Myra. Frank Blake has spent the last 24 hours working himself into a full-blown tantrum. Now he's checking Sarah out. We've got to stop him. It's Christmas Eve, damn it. We're taking our son home. Amelia, I'm gonna be blunt. The Blakes are leaving because of your unprofessional conduct. You owe them an apology. And if they leave, I'm holding you personally responsible. You promised. Look, I know. 
I won't be long, okay? Oh, yes. I'll be home before lunch. You expect us to wait patiently, right? Mommy, not fair. Mr. Blake, why don't you come to my office and we'll discuss this. We're leaving. I tried to explain things to Dr. Stewart here, the expert, but all she did was insult me. Mr. Blake, I was wrong and I apologize. For Sarah's sake, let me try to straighten this out. Please, Frank. There's nothing to straighten out. Page to Dr. Reynolds. Dr. Reynolds to the nurse's team. Mrs. Blake, I know what you think, that I don't really care and that I don't love her. No, that's not true. Uh, what I said was stupid and cruel. The truth is, we don't know what's wrong with Sarah. I don't know. I do love her. Geraldine! Well, then keep her here. Let her stay. I have to go. Dr. Eugenia, You've let your personal feelings override your professional judgment. Sarah Blake is a patient. Her parents are distraught. Well, I'm distraught, Myra. I'm a mother, and my child is sick, too. When you're in this hospital, you are a doctor, first and foremost. I want a full report on my desk before you leave. Keep it down. He's trying to sleep. You can't just take him, Matt. He's sick. Yeah. But he's not dying, so I guess I can handle it. Son of a bitch, where is he? Listen to me. My whole childhood revolved around midnight calls and broken promises, and I don't want that for Alex. It's not my job to make up for all the attention you never got. Oh, that's fine. You know that I was about to be married. No, I thought I did. Oh, so instead you're going to pick somebody like Patty, who's a charming and beautiful and old-fashioned? Come on, she's just a friend. And she happens to think that Alex is someone special. Oh, and you think I don't? We never put him first. He has to go through emergency to get your undivided attention. That's a crop, Matt. You know it. If the tables were turned and you were the doctor, this wouldn't be happening. Wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't. Look, I do more than my share. Yeah, you have to be applauded and congratulated and petted every step of the way. You're a spoiled brat, Matt. You're acting like a baby. You, you can't accept that I love what I do and it's important to me because you're still not convinced that what you do counts. No! I'm not convinced that we still count, that we are important. I want to see you. I want to speak to you. Home! Like hell you will. Go home, Amelia. Go on. I'm not going to let you keep him. I'm going to fight you every step of the way. No, you won't. You don't have the time. way up and his arterial line stopped working so we had to put a new one in doctor what's gonna happen i don't know we've scheduled a spinal tap and a lung biopsy either one could kill him or he could go on until 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 you change your mind and decide he can come off the vent. I never really knew him. I know how hard it is to let go. But it's too late. I want it to be his friend. 
prayed. I've asked God. Did he answer? My son has had enough. I have no one to blame but myself. I made this mess. Take better care of the ones you love than I did, Doctor. Merry Christmas to you. I'll get you some rope with your car. Great.
Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's Christmas, you know, in the mall. Great guy, that Santa, huh? I got all sorts of stuff. Let's see him. I'll show you. Are you home? Can you forgive me? Can you live with me? Well, I can't live without you. I know. You're my prize. Christine. Hey, we have a patient coming in. Thought you might want to be here. I've got one week's vacation coming to me, and I'm going to take it no matter what. Just thought you might want to know. It's Geraldine Blake with Sarah. Oh, um, put her on. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Blake. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Dr. Stewart. Listen, I want you to know that I'm going to be spending this week with my family. Um, but I'm really glad you're there, okay? So I'll see you when I get back. I understand. All right, and don't worry about anything. Christine will take good care of you. Thanks. Bye. Wait till you see. I got a sword and an axe and a mason spear and a pilot chair. Oh, uh, thank you. For what? For what you did. I have no idea what you're talking about. What did he bring you? Well, he brought me the best present in the whole world. Oh. 